Racing TV. I am your host, Angelina Wilson. Today, as we said on Monday, we are going to talk about the case of Betsy Ardzma. Betsy was murdered in the Patty Library at the University of Pennsylvania, where she was a graduate student. She had come back early from the Thanksgiving holiday to do a research project for her English class. Um, Betsy was an English and art major. <clears throat> this was on November 28, 1969. Um, Betsy was 22 years old. Um, first she went to the basement to talk to the professor to get information what she needed for her project. Then she went up to the second floor into the stacks to get books to research. That's how they did it then. That's how they did it when I was in school. Because um, <laughs> I may look young. I am not. Um, <laughs> we used books. We used the library. We used the encyclopedia. Gasp. Um, I'm not as old as her, but. Um, and that's what she did. Now, if you're not familiar with the library, and I know a lot of people said that's what they called it, the stacks. Well, actually, that's what it's called in every library. Um, being somebody that worked in the library, <laughs> both in school and in the real library, I know this. They call it that because it's pretty much floor to ceiling um, heavy metal bookcase. In some cases, those bookcases can move with a Turner thing. Um, but in a smaller library, that wouldn't be the case. And they call that the stacks. So, but I, I just wanted to clear that up because a lot of people said that's what that library called it, or that's what the kids there called it. No, that's actually the proper name. Um, but anyway, <laughs> she was murdered with a hunting knife. Someone came up to her, probably someone that she knew, and stuck the knife right in her heart. Barely no blood. She didn't scream. Well, some reports say sh she may have. Some reports say she didn't. She dragged a whole bunch of books down onto the floor with her when she fell. <sighs> Initially, it was thought to have been a medical emergency and that she'd had a seizure or something. So, um, and she'd urinated. Another sign of a possible seizure. Um, so they began cleaning up. They had the janitor come in, the custodian clean up the urine, you know, mop that up, picked up the books, put them back on the shelf, um, which really screwed the pooch when she got to the medical examiner's, uh, well, actually to the hospital, then the medical examiner's office, and they found out she'd been stabbed. She was wearing a red dress, so nobody noticed the small stab wound. It was only about an inch long. Um, it wasn't until they removed that and saw a little spot of blood on her white undergarment um, that they realized <coughs> that this was a criminal situation. By then they had lost their crime scene. Um, that's very unfortunate. One of the strange things was right before she was found by another young lady, a young man went up to the desk and said, somebody needs to help that girl. But the lady at the desk, the librarian, didn't know what he was talking about. Kids do strange things. Um, and you know something? In looking at my notes, I said the University of Pennsylvania. It's actually Penn State University. So I do apologize for that. Um, Again, again, she was only stabbed once, but in a very specific spot. Went right through the left atrium of her, of her heart and severed her pulmonary artery. So death came quick, mercifully. But it takes someone with a bit of skill and a bit of knowledge on the human body to do that. Um, now, it's fair to say here that her boyfriend, who was about to propose to her over Christmas, 
um, was, in fact, a medical student at Penn State. Um, one of the reasons she decided to do her post-grad studies there. Um, he is in no way a suspect, but it's important to note that because it could have been one of his classmates, somebody that was familiar, like I said, with the human body and where to put it to make a quick and quiet kill in a very public place. Although there weren't very many people there because it was still the Thanksgiving holiday, there were a few students that had come back for, you know, miscellaneous projects, but <coughs> and reports. But overall, it was not very busy for the library. Um, like I said, the area was unfortunately cleaned. Um, it's been 50, well, no, about 42 years since, um, no, 52 years, I'm sorry, 52 years since this happened, and they still have not solved it. They're not giving up. If you read through the newspaper archives, you will see throughout the years. Um, there were, <laughs> there was one particular person of interest. Um, most public publications and, um, and websites will call him a suspect, but police make it clear that he's not a suspect. Um, he was a strange man. He had been in trouble. He was an assistant professor and a, a doctoral student who had gotten in trouble for pedophilic activities um, and for uh, beating women. Um, his name was <coughs> Richard. He um, might not have had the knowledge, although he might have, because he did study some science. Um, I don't remember what his doctorate was going to be in. I think some sort of science. Yes, because that's what he did for the rest of his life. He died of a heart attack. Um, fairly young. And his 40s or 50s. Um, if you listen to friends and family of his, including his cousin whom he worked with, um, they will tell you that they believe he did it. I'm not 100% convinced of Richard. There is, um, There are two books published about um, Richard ha Hafner um, and, and this case that name him as the prime suspect. Like I said, I'm not entirely convinced of that. Um, he, um, the science that he studied was geology, which is rocks. But it's still science. You still take other science courses, I would imagine, along the way. Um, you know, to learn to recognize, like, fossils in rocks and stuff like that. So you would learn the bones, I would, I would imagine. I, I, I don't know. I could be all wet here. Um, but he was a monster anyway. Um, As I said, her boyfriend, whose name was David Wright, was cleared. Um, today, he is Dr. David Wright. Pediatrician. Um, <clears throat> one of the books is called Murder in the Stacks. Again, um, One of the reasons that Richard Hafner became the prime suspect 
in these books and in the minds of a lot of people, although the police make it very clear, person of interest, not suspect. Although, in police jargon, I don't think there's a huge difference. <laughs> um, he had gone to his advise his doctoral advisor um, and said he was very upset about what had happened to Betsy and asked him if he'd seen the newspaper. Well, the newspaper hadn't come out yet. How did he know? My guess is he was in the library. He may have even been the person that went to the librarian, which a lot of people think he was um, because they say he looked like the sketch. I didn't find any pictures of him, um, but the sketch is, is up on the on the poster. <laughs> I hate doing this. There it is. Um, I have a hard time with that. As of 2013, the state police still had a trooper dedicated to this case. That's great. I see so many cases that just go and nobody cares about them anymore. This was a young woman just starting her life and somebody just walked up and snuffed it out just like that <coughs> can't imagine why um I do know and this is what I was telling you um last week was that or Monday was that things do get stranger on the 25th anniversary Someone placed the shrine directly on the spot where Betsy was killed, or real close to it. They did the same thing again on the 30th. There were phone calls made. Um, And interestingly, 30 years earlier, another student, Rachel, forgive me, I can't read my own darn writing, Taylorford, was also stabbed and killed. She lived in the same dorm hall, um, and she was returning from a holiday break, in her case, Easter. I found that interesting just because... Um, it's weird, you know, it's a weird coincidence. I don't think the two cases are related. I mean, they're 30 years apart, but, I mean, hey, the same professor could have been there. That being said, highly unlikely. <laughs> I just thought the similarities were interesting. So I just wanted to share it with you. And I apologize if I got that, that surname incorrect. My handwriting is atrocious. Um, a postcard was sent from Atlanta to Penn State Police in the 70s. I don't know what the postcard actually said because I never said. Um, in 2013, a Penn State film student actually made a film um, about the case and brought new life to the case. Um, I wasn't able to find it. I looked on YouTube. I wasn't able to find his actual film. If you're out there, post it, please. Because um, it could be very interesting. It could jog a memory. Um, who knows? You know, maybe if he, if he shops it around, if you make sure it's edited perfectly and shops it around. Maybe he can get Netflix or one of the other streaming services to to grab it up. You know, and get some exposure for Betsy, you know. Um, so I, I think that would be awesome. His um, film actually had, it was a documentary. It had interviews with investigators and all sorts of things like that, and people love that stuff today. True crime is huge, and and like I said, it drags people's memories. Um, 
next time. Um, I haven't actually decided what case we're going to talk about. <laughs> Usually I have them all figured out, but I've been doing so much that I haven't had a chance to sit down with my cases and kind of decide, so I apologize. So it's a surprise, I guess. Um, that will be next Tuesday. And don't forget, tomorrow I will be on Deep Dark Truth Podcast alongside Jim Hoffman discussing the case of the boy in the box, America's unknown child. Links to come on all of my social media, which are linked below in the, co in the description. Thank you for joining me. Have a wonderful rest of your gorgeous sunny day. Remember to mask up, Bad May. Get that shot when you can. God bless you. <laughs>